Hello and welcome to M&A Murders and Accusations, the good, the bad, and the ugly of selling your business. We dig into what you need to know and how not to kill the sell of your business. Now here's our host, Rick J. Krebs, Mergers and Acquisitions Advisor. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our show, The Good, the Bad, and the Ugly of Selling a Business. Today's topic is the four types of people. And you might wonder, why is this important? Why do we need to understand the different personality types and types of people that we're going to encounter, particularly when selling a business? Well, it's all about learning about what entices these people, what gets them excited, and how to answer them and how best to to answer their questions and, and get them excited. So I'm going to start with a story. Back when I was in public accounting down in Las Vegas, I had a boss and um, his name was Greg. And we would get a, a notice that he wanted us to come into the office. And we always just called it the page from hell. Because every time we went into his office, he was going to chew our butts for something. It's just kind of the type of guy he was. He was a bull in a china closet. And oftentimes the girls would be crying in the restroom. And one of the, one of the ladies went into him and says, Greg, if I go into that restroom one more time and there's somebody crying because you yelled at him, I'm going to quit. <laughs> and <laughs> he toned it down for a couple of minutes after that. But he was a bit of a tyrant. And um, in dealing with a personality type like that, I'm going to call him the rhino. In dealing with that, uh, particularly an accountant, you had to answer the questions very specifically and very briefly and accurately. And if you did not, you'd get blasted. And uh, if you did and you became part of his little club and he liked you, then uh, it, it was all great. But if not, then there were more people outside of his club than inside his club. And I tell you that because knowing how to deal with these people and knowing how to answer and to get them excited is extremely important through the selling process because you're going to want to have a read on your buyers ahead of these meetings. You're going to want to know where they're coming from. Let's use an example here of the beach. So there's four different types of people. And if you're on the beach, you can spot them. So first there's the captain. He's the ship captain. They call them the, the rhinos, the visionaries. They're the people that are, that are um, the movers and shakers of the world. The second type of person is the surfer. You know, they're the surfer dudes. They're having fun. It's all happy. It's all fun and games. They don't have a job, but hey, as long as they're uh, riding the waves, it's all good, man. That's the that's surfer. You know, then there's the lifeguard. A lifeguard is the do-gooder. They're trying to protect people, protect humanity. They're the Mother Teresas of the world, the one that want to help. And then fourth, there's the lap swimmers. You see just outside in the bay here, there's going to be a lap swimmer, and they're just very methodical, very systematic about their approach. If you've ever watched the lap swimmers, they just go back and forth and back and forth. So those are the four types of people, captain, surfer, lifeguard, and lap swimmer. Now, I want to talk about each one a little bit. Let's start with the captain, the visionaries, the rhinos. These people are usually the ones that are that are driving the ship. They're the captains. They're the ones that um, are leading the charge. And uh, the questions they ask and how to spot them, usually what they're going to ask is they're, they're focused on vision. They're focused on potential. They're focused on opportunity. And so how to spot what type of person they are is by the questions that they ask. It's very simple. You just sit back and you look at them. And you're like, oh, yep, that's a surfer. That's a yellow personality. I'm going to call the captain the red personality. Anyway, and you can tell. And you're like, okay, when I've got a surfer, this is how I'm going to answer. When I've got a visionary, this is how I'm going to answer. So the questions that a visionary person would ask is, what is the potential with this company? What can this company do and where can we take it? The thing that motivates them is vision, potential, and opportunity. And so when you're talking to a visionary, talking to a captain, you're going to talk about where we're headed and where we could go. And, and uh, by merging these two companies, we, we have economies of scale and we have, you know, one plus one doesn't equal two. One plus one is equal to five. And this is how it works. And so that's how you speak to these people. You answer them and um, talk to them about where you're headed and where, most importantly, it can go. Common roles, the CEO, the buyers, um, they're ship captains. 
their strengths are their movers and shakers. They're big picture guys. They're Elon Musk. You know, they're guys that are out there doing things, and and they're that's one of their strengths. But their weaknesses is sometimes they overlook the details, and so they need to have an entourage of um, other types of methodical types of bean counters and accountants and, and attorneys to help them because sometimes they'll get into trouble. Now, the next type of person, the surfer, these are the happy guys. These are the people that it's all about the fun, the party, the enjoyment. It's about creation. I typically see them in the marketing role. I see them in sales. Questions they ask is they're going to ask, how do we market? How do we grow this business? Uh, what are your sales like? And, um, or what are your sales systems like? And in the back of their mind, they're asking, is this a fun project? You know, if you want to, if you want somebody to be in charge of the company party, your surfer, your, your surfer guy is the one to do it. Your party animal, that's the one to organize the party because they're going to do a great party. You don't want to put the captain in charge of it because he's not going to know what to do. How you answer their questions is you talk about the beauty. You talk about the fun. You talk about the creation Artists are in this category. Common roles, you see them in marketing and sales. Their strengths are they are the life of the party. They're fun to be around. People like them. Their weaknesses are because they're too much on the party side, they don't pay attention to the financial side, for instance, or maybe the rules that, you know, rules are to be broken. And uh, that's how they kind of look at things. Uh, example is just a surfer dude. You think about someone who is in this category, they're the ones that, that love to have fun. Number three these are the do-gooders. These are the lifeguard on the beach. They're the ones that are out there watching out for other people, watching out for humanity, watching out for the, the planet. And uh, they're going to ask about the company and how you've helped mankind, how you've helped the climate or the world or the universe. What motivates them is charitable intent, uh, making an impact on people's lives, on the planet, on the universe. How you answer them is you talk about how what you do benefits the employees. You talk about the employee benefit package, for instance. You know, you talk about how it benefits the world, how green the business is, how it benefits the climate. And uh, you want to emphasize that. Talk about charitable contributions and the charities that you that the company gives to. Common roles, I see them often involved in nonprofit organizations. The strengths are they keep us grounded, right? They keep us thinking about what is most important. And uh, their weaknesses, sometimes they overlook profits. <laughs> so it's like, hey, let's save the planet, but uh, we don't ever have to make profit uh, in order to do so. We're giving all our money away or giving to a charity, which is good, but it has to be also done, done systematically and properly. An example of this is Mother Teresa, you know, someone who really is concerned about other people. The fourth type, this is the lap swimmer. These are methodical people. They're bean counters, number people. Uh, engineers, CPAs. I'm a CPA and I'm a methodical type thinker. The questions that they're going to ask are, why was the 22 EBITDA down 2% versus up 3.8% compared to 2021? You see that question? That's right into the heart of the details of the financials. They're going to ask the question, how much does it cost? Your visionary is going to ask, what can it do? But a methodical is going to ask, well, how much does this cost me? They're always looking at the cost, the bottom line. What motivates them is order, accuracy, numbers, systems, processes, methods, and rules. Now, they drive the surfer dudes crazy, right? Because they could care less about rules. Life is about the enjoyment and about fun. But these are all part of the necessary parts of the organization. How you answer a methodical is you're direct, you're accurate, and we inundate them with data. They are data junkies. They love data. So you just inundate them and throw data at them that they just eat it up. And they feel like you're throwing so much at them that they love it, that you're being honest. And they love the rules and they love the data. Common roles are typically the CPA, the CFO, engineer, finance, or the bankers of the world. Their strength is they're necessary to keep visionaries and the surfers in check. Their weaknesses is because they're so focused on the minute details, they often miss the big picture. So as you're looking to go to a buyer meeting, as you're preparing for a conversation with buyers, if you can beforehand make an assessment of the type of person they are, then you can know, like if Mr. Ship Captain is asking 
a question, you can know how to answer them. If it's the methodical person asking that question, you know exactly how to answer them. It sounds kind of cliche, but by giving them what they want and what they're looking for, it makes them kind of start watering at the mouth and wanting it more and wanting your business more. And uh, how you have these conversations with them and what the topics are, are going to have them salivating over you, right? If you don't answer them properly, you take a visionary, you start giving them too many details like you would a methodical. The visionary's tuned out. I mean, they are ADD to the max. They're, they're like, um, you know, give me the 10 second version. And a methodical, they're going to want the 30 minute version and all of the precise details. They love details and they get into the details and they'll stay with you. Surfer guy, he'll be, he won't even be listening to you. He's going to be out there catching a wave. <laughs> but you see what I mean? It's um, how you approach them and how you answer their questions are going to help you in immeasurable ways as you're selling your business. I want to take some time now and elaborate on how we answer each of these four different types of people. I think the first thing to know when you're working with these four people is what is their motivation? You need to identify their motivation and then speak to that motivation. For example, if you're a car guy and you really like Corvettes, you're going to be most intrigued and interested in people that are talking to you about Corvettes, right? That's where your interest is. That's what you like. Engine size, horsepower, color, you know, year, C1, C2, what was it? You know, what are they doing next year? Those things interest you. You're not that interested in, in it, how the weather impacts the roof of the building, for instance, or the wind impacts the weather of the building. Now, an engineer would be interested in that, but a car guy who likes Corvettes is not interested in that. So it's extremely important as you're working with buyers to, one, identify the type of person they are, and two, once you've identified that their type or their personality type, then you speak to that for instance, let's talk about rhinos first. How do you answer a rhino? Rhinos are typically the CEOs. They're the movers and shakers. What motivates them? Their main motivators are opportunity, vision, direction. Opportunity, vision, and direction. And how you answer them is you answer them with facts. You make direct answers. You don't beat around the bush. They have an attention span of about three and a half seconds and they get lost if you beat around the bush or if you over answer questions, direct, short answers. Um, I heard one time that Elon Musk has meetings that only last 10 minutes. So if you meet with him, you've got to get out what you have to say and get it done in 10 minutes. If not, he's on to the next meeting. So when you talk to these guys, their motivations are going to be opportunity where can this business go? How can it grow with the additional capital? We can do this or that, or uh, what is the direction of the business? And what is the vision of the direction of the business? Those are the things that excite, excite them. Those are the things that are going to get them um, kind of drooling over the business and willing to pay more money. So you're going to talk big picture with them. Emotions don't matter. They want you to be realistic and they want to know where can this business take me? What can it do for me? How can it grow? An example, back to Greg, my old boss. Before you went into his office, after we got the page from hell, we had to go in there. We, we realized that you have to go in with your homework ahead of time and be prepared to answer. You got to be prepared to stand your ground. And if you don't know the answer, do not guess. Give them straight up uh, truths. And if you... If you feel like you have to guess or squeeze out an answer, just don't do that. You stand your ground. So with the SaaS company that I was selling or I sold a couple of years ago, we had um, the buyer and he was a, he was a rhino. And uh, the main guy leading the buyer team was a rhino. And he was talking about banking. And this was a lending company. And, and uh, you know, we talked about banking, not just amongst credit unions and banks, but where is banking going in the future? And uh, we talked about channels and opportunities and what this software was going to do for them. And uh, it, it lit him up. He got excited. So the weaknesses of rhinos and CEOs is sometimes they overlook the details because they're so involved in the big picture, they overlook the details. <clears throat> now, how do you answer a surfer? Uh, surfers are typically the salespeople, the sales director in the business. Their motivations are fun, 
party excitement. How you answer them is you tell them how much fun it is to work at your business. You know, they love to see, I've got a, I've got a company we're selling right now, and I think larger than the office space is the soda, soda and game area. You know, these SaaS companies, they have ping pong and pool tables and all kinds of things, little cars to ride around, looks like a playhouse, but they love to know how much fun it is. And so you answer them, your answers to their questions are in regard to to the excitement and to the fun. You know, the green, the green glass door re- reviews of the employees, that it's a great place to work, voted as one of the top places to work in the in the state. Those are things that will, will really resonate with them. You talk about sales teams, you talk about functions, you talk about the excitement and the fun, talk about big deals that you, that you did, um, you know, the big wins that you made. Office environment and workspace environment are important to them. For example, uh, tell them about the benefits of working there, how you like to work remotely, for instance, if you work remotely. If you don't work remotely, tell them how cool it is to be in the office with all of these really cool people and how it enhances your, not just your working um, relationships, but your personal relationships. Those are the things that are going to be exciting to them. Weaknesses. They don't care that much about profits as they do about having fun. So have them plan the, um, have them plan the parties, but give them a budget. <laughs> So now let's talk about the lifeguard. These are the Mother Teresas. These are the ones that are motivations are helping people and helping the planet. You gotta talk about charity. Money is not a motivation for lifeguards. They're too interested in trying to help people and uh, help the planet. So don't talk about money unless it's how much money you spent to save the planet. For example, there's a B corporations out there and they donate uh, oftentimes, uh, or there's another one called One Percent for the Planet, where they donate one percent of the gross sales to the planet. You know, like Patagonia, for instance, does this. And these are the things that are intriguing and interesting to lifeguards. These are the things that are going to help them to pay more for the business. So, how do you answer them? You explain why the business exists and how it helps make people's lives better. You explain how it improves the quality of life or efficiencies in their lives how it makes their relationships better. You tell stories that tug on the emotions of customers, employees, and vendors who you have helped. Um, Weaknesses. Nonprofit organizations are just that, nonprofits. So they don't make a lot of money. In in fact, they're not interested in making money. They're interested in helping. And so they don't care as much about the profits as they do about the motivation and how they help. Okay, last, how do you answer a lap swimmer, or I call them methodical? These are the accountants. These are the engineers and the attorneys. Their main, their main motivation is rules, regulations, and they love methods. They love systems and processes and organizations. Generally, they're not in charge. And if they are in charge, it can, uh, it can be ugly, right? Because they're so worried about the rules and, and you need, they're, they're often better as seamen than they are ship captains, um, accountants, engineers, and attorneys. So, how do you answer the questions? Well, we're going to do another one, <clears throat> or we did another um, segment here on zingers. And uh, you deflect, and then you inundate with data. Don't piecemeal the data. Send it in loads. They love data. They're data junkies. Tell them the facts. They like accuracy. They don't like it blowing smoke. You know, they just they want to hear the facts. Tell about your processes, your organization, your systems, your proprietary software and how well it how well it runs and it and it makes the company run efficiently they love well-oiled machines um they're also the most likely ones to ask the zingers you know you'll have the the rhinos come in and they'll bring their little methodical people to ask the zingers they don't want to ask the questions but they'll ask them to weaknesses of the methodicals are that they can overlook the big picture because they're mired in the details So they get so mired in the details, they lose sight of the big picture. Thank you for tuning in today. The good, the bad, and the ugly. M&A, murders, and accusations. The good, the bad, the ugly of selling a business. Thank you for attending our podcast. We invite you to join us for future episodes of M&A, murders, and accusations. The good, the bad, and the ugly of selling your business. You can also visit us at www.bsalesgroup.com or email Rick directly at rick at bsalesgroup.com.